Lake Nyos Disaster Natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, and tsunamis are relatively common, and the media is frequently filled with stories of their paths of destruction and subsequent loss of life. Those who live in areas where these natural disasters are frequent are aware of the risks and often take precautions in the event of such a disaster. However, many other types of natural disasters are much more frightening and costly to life, yet are so rare that people hardly ever consider them. One such occurrence is a limnic eruption, which infamously caused what is known as the Lake Nyos disaster on the 21st of August 1986. A limnic eruption is powered by dissolved carbon dioxide that builds up within the deep waters of a lake until the pressure causes it to explode upward and outward. This explosion generates a poisonous gas cloud that can suffocate humans and animals in the vicinity, as well as potentially triggering associated events like tsunamis. The Lake Nyos disaster was one of the worst examples of such a tragedy, as between 100,000 and 300,000 tons of noxious carbon dioxide exploded from the depths of the lake in northwestern Cameroon. Some experts even estimate that there could have been as much as 1.6 million tons of carbon dioxide making up the gas cloud that formed as it was expelled from the lake at almost 100 kilometers per hour. This cloud, being heavier than the surrounding air, quickly sank over the nearby villages, replacing the oxygen and immediately suffocating hundreds of people, livestock and animals that were within 25 kilometers of the lakefront. In total, this tragedy took the lives of over 1,700 individuals and 3,500 livestock. The explosion generated a 25-meter wave across the surface of the lake that crashed to one shore, helping to power the thick gas cloud that moved down the valley. Hundreds of victims in the nearby villages of Nyos, Cam, Char, and Sabum were suffocated instantly in their sleep. Thousands more fled from the area and were able to escape, but later developed associated issues such as respiratory problems, painful lesions, and even paralysis. Luckily, limnic eruptions are incredibly rare and are frequently triggered by a preceding earthquake, volcano, or seismic activity. Additionally, they typically only occur within lakes that have already displayed elements of such activity and are therefore known as limnically active or exploding lakes. In the wake of the Lake Nyos disaster, experts engaged in multiple studies about how such a disaster could be prevented in the future, including implementing methods that help to keep the levels of carbon dioxide within a safe range by venting out the CO2 through pumps. A degassing tube system has been installed within the lake since 2001, and it was recently determined that the tubes were able to keep the levels of carbon dioxide at a steady state that dramatically reduces the risk of an eruption. Additionally, the study of this tragic disaster has prompted officials to analyze other limnically active lakes to determine the risk of a limnic explosion, and several additional lakes were found to be supersaturated with carbon dioxide and subsequently underwent preventative and corrective measures to hopefully counteract a future incident. It is raining plastic in the Rocky Mountains. One thing that nobody expected to be falling from the sky is plastic. Unfortunately, that is exactly what a team of researchers working with the United States Geological Survey uncovered during their analysis of rainwater samples in the Rocky Mountains. The team was using the samples in order to determine if nitrogen pollution was present, but what they found was even more concerning. The analysts revealed that microplastic was found in over 90% of the samples that were collected from eight different sites throughout Denver and Boulder, Colorado. And while microplastics in rainwater is not an unusual or unique occurrence, it was previously thought that most instances of contamination were limited to urban areas with much higher pollution rates. However, many of these recent samples were taken from locations that were very rural, and were not expected to contain the levels of microplastics that they did. The research team stated in the report that, more plastic fibers were observed in samples from urban sites than from remote, mountainous sites. However, frequent observation of plastic fibers in washout samples from the remote site CO98 at Loch Vale in Rocky Mountain National Park suggests that wet disposition of plastic is ubiquitous and not just an urban condition. The site CO98 that is referenced in the Rocky Mountains is from a rarely frequented location over 3,000 meters above sea level, where it was thought that the likelihood of plastic contamination would be low. 
After further analysis of the plastics, it seems that most of the contamination is from thin strands resembling synthetic fibers from many clothes and other fabrics. The plastics were noted in a variable rainbow of colors, from blue to red, purple, green and even silver. Although these microscopic particles are only visible under at least 20 times magnification and may not seem like much, the fact of the matter is that millions of tons of these microplastics make their way into our oceans and ecosystems every year. And some estimate that we consume over 70,000 microplastic particles a year at the bare minimum. These recent results confirm that there is undoubtedly much more plastic that exists unsuspected within our world and determining the extent of the potential damages is critical in assessing the state of the pollution crisis, both visible and microscopic. Because these microplastics were discovered in areas where they were totally unanticipated, the researchers who were part of the team were able to conclude that it might be quite literally raining plastic and thus affecting even the rural and unpopulated ecosystems much more than scientists had anticipated. However, because the original study was only structured for the analysis of nitrogen pollution in the collected samples, the microplastic pollution having been an unanticipated shock, much more thorough investigation is needed to determine what this discovery might mean for the microplastic pollution across the world. Something in space keeps exploding repeatedly. A mysterious cosmic blast has been spotted by astrophysicists, expelling intense and frequent blasts of pure energy. Scientists are still baffled as to what might be causing these odd explosions. The bursts have been labelled as fast radio bursts, or FRBs. This cosmic marvel originates back in 2007 when it first appeared. The radio aspect of the electromagnetic spectrum is triggered by FRBs, which create radio wave pulses. These blasts are short, lasting a mere few thousandths of a single second, but their strength and power is so great it overpowers the amount of energy our sun releases in an entire year. It is common for FRBs to release a radio wave explosion only one time in their lifetime. But the object now known as FRB 121102 and some others release these bursts of energy multiple times at random moments. FRB 121102 was found to be located 3 billion light years away from Earth in a dwarf galaxy. Using the Chinese FAST or 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope, astronomers were able to experiment and explore possibilities with FRB 121102. FAST is the most advanced radio telescope on the planet. It is able to detect the smallest changes in outer space that normal telescopes used by space organizations such as NASA might not manage to see. In a span of only 60 hours, FRB 121102 blasted energy a shocking 1,652 times, that is up to 117 times in a single hour. Never before has an FRB created pulses at such insane speeds. FRBs tend to occur away from Earth, meaning we rarely get a chance to adequately study them. Exceptionally, in 2020, an FRB was discovered in our Milky Way. It turns out that the source of this particular FRB close to us is a magnetar. Magnetars are deceased stars produced from neutron stars. This is the first time we have ever discovered a source of an FRB, and it is uncertain whether all magnetars are the origins of FRBs or just this one. Still, where the FRB comes from is now not known. The leading theory suggests it comes from magnetic reactions on the magnetar's surface, its magnetic field rivals that of Earth by trillions, and therefore the FRB blasts might come as a result of such volatile magnetic fields. The FRB blasts created by the Milky Way magnetar are nowhere near as intense or frequent as FRB 121102's is, but research into this subject is still fresh and there are infinite things scientists do not yet understand about FRBs. None of the research is yet conclusive. Scientist Victoria Caspi stated, the question is now for the theorists. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? 
Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.